My name is Winston Morrison. I run Melbourne Tap Dance, which is the site for our tap dance classes and performing group here in Melbourne, Australia. I make a living as a tap dancer and pianist, both teaching and performing. I love tap because it's real. I love how you just go for a sound or a feeling and it just ripples through your whole body. Um, it's, it's, a, it's the one dance that, I, that comes naturally to me, makes the most sense. I just love how your body reacts to what your feet are doing. And it's just always a, an awesome picture or snapshot in time. zone out in a room or out on the bridge while tap dancing. I took up tap because growing up as a kid around 10 years old, I would be surrounded by, uh, on TV, Things like Sesame Street, where Savion would appear. And also other shows like Tap Dogs, Hot Tree Shuffle, River Dance, Lord of the Dance, they would all be on TV and I'd be like, how, how do they move their feet like that? I told my parents this and they put me in a dance school down, down the road. Then I just started finding better teachers from there. Tap dancing was late primary school. My friends would think it's actually pretty cool. Uh, I'd be, you know, in my shoes tap dancing on the pavement at, at uh, recess. And yeah, I hear stories of people being uh, picked on, especially their boys, uh, dancing, but I don't know. I think it depends who you are, what, what kind of approach, or what kind of uh, vibe you give to it. Uh, for me, it was always positive, and, and they thought it was really cool. So, yeah. When you'd be learning in dance schools, it would sometimes be such a... Um, big gap from what you'd be seeing on TV or the stage shows and you'd wonder what am I missing you know that I'm, I can't understand what they're doing and I was lucky enough to, to then start learning from Grant Swift who's another teacher based in Melbourne and uh, learned from him for quite a few years and he was able to, to, to bridge that gap because he was dancing and teaching at a high level and it was through him that I'd also joined his troupe and I got my first professional gig and that was quite significant because when you get your first paid performing gig, uh, it plants a seed in your mind that you know, I, can, I can do something with tap and get paid for it. So it was good um, encouragement and eye-opener that you could do this for a living. <laughs> In 2010, Grant Swift and I formed a 10-piece band, TAP. We co-wrote songs and featured tap dance and his routines. I wouldn't say I've really sacrificed anything to be a tap dancer. It's just been a, a way of life and it influences your choices. The turning point was in 2008, I deferred my physiotherapy course in uni, I was halfway through and I went to New York for three months and did tap there, festivals and jams and just the regular classes and I decided I want to do that for the rest of my life. So when I came back, I uh, didn't go back to uni and I just stayed on this path and started teaching. And so yeah, that's how it's been. So I don't know any other way of life. But if I could do anything, I would just be doing this anyway. My parents were not really supportive of me doing tap as a career. Because they were more academically minded, so they wanted me to have a, a regular profession. But I um, just listened to myself, because it is your life at the end of the day and you've got to live it. So rather than living someone else's desire and dreams, 
even though they, they think it's the best for you, you know what's best for yourself and I live off the support of myself and you build your own circle of influence around you. So even though your family don't support that decision, they'll support you in other ways, so just keep um, doing what you love. Recently I've also been training um, breakdance, power moves and flips to give me more options to work with and for the fun of it. Obstacles that I've had to overcome, uh, man, first thing that comes to mind is your sound. When you're doing a show, they often don't realise your sound is so important and you have to end up bringing your own stuff half the time, like your floor or your microphones and also just getting access to people being in Australia and all your all the people that you want to learn from are in America, so booking flights and planning those takes time and you know, accumulating the money to do that. YouTube and the internet's been really important in my development as a dancer. First of all, when people mention a name, you can go look them up on, on the internet and uh, be exposed and expand your knowledge. So even though I didn't get to meet many of the tap elders, I feel like I got to know them through their dance and interviews. Lately I've also been studying a lot of uh, dancers, so say look up Jimmy Slide, you know, pick up some of his footwork and the next time you jam or do a routine at the right moment, you know, the slide might come in or Gregory Hines, you know, when you jam it's like one, two, so you, you pick up things and it becomes part of who you are and your style and it's good to have a piece of the greats who came before you as well as having your own. Things that have helped me the most in TAP, and you could extend this to life in general, uh, being inspired by people who do things that you want to do. So I'm seeing a tapper who just blows your mind and you study them for a while. Also in an environment where there's nothing else to do but the one thing, so where that was um, living in the city. Um, and then going out on the street to, to busk every day as a way to pay rent. That was a, a great environment. That was the single year that my tap improved the most. I learned to, to jam for the first time, like stay on beat because when you're on the street, people are watching. So where you'd normally stop and, and re-correct yourself on the street, you've got to keep going and, and eventually learn to stay on beat and you learn to improvise in time. Things like that helped me the most. Three months I went to America. My tap just grew so much there as well. I just like the vibe of that city. <laughs> like conditions there, and that like took you to a uh, state of mind which was uh, you'd never been before. <laughs> just amazing things would happen. Omar at Minton's would um, post and dance for the whole night hours and I'd ask him afterwards how did you how do you dance for so long because at the end of my say 10 minute spot I'd be my legs were burning with lactic acid um, and he's like because I'm not dancing he said you could probably outrun me because you're fitter but he was not you know dancing he was more playing an instrument so he'd stick on a pattern you know, for a while and then he changed it up when he felt like it so now I started taking that approach, more relaxed and it was more, more enjoyable and made you learn to take your time and the audience likes to, to, to lock into your groove and go through repetitions, so that was a good learning. Wasting all your energy. Visiting Bunny Briggs was uh, pretty amazing too. He uh, even even in sandals on his uh, on his bed he could make up some funky rhythms, you know, um, and I'll tell you all these 
cool stories. It was just great to, to connect with a, a great tap dancer that you'd seen on, on documentaries and films only and then to see them you know, just this far apart and have a meaningful conversation with them was amazing. LA Tap Festival. I remember towards the end of the festival I was just practicing in a room and I was doing over the tops and Ivory Wheeler came in and he told me to uh, use the tip of my toe when I was going over the top. And uh, just that one piece of advice really cleaned up my whole um, over the top and I'm able to pass it on to other people now. So I'm really grateful that someone uh, cared enough to take the effort to come and tell me and give me a great tip on my tap dancing style. I've got my own uh, group of performers, which is pretty much my advanced class. Oh. I love providing opportunities for my up and coming students to perform, teach, and choreograph. <laughs> Outside of class, we keep rehearsing for our next performance or next opportunity so that we're ready. We go around the Melbourne Tap Dance Crew. And recently we did the Wangaratta Jazz Festival. So what? Miles Davis. It's a nice thing to do because to be recognised as part of a jazz festival means they recognise us as musicians. Because I remember going to one of these jazz clubs in Melbourne and one of their jam nights, they didn't want to have tap dance because they think they'd be introducing other things like circus or something. Obviously they were a bit uh, ignorant or oblivious to the fact that we were part of um, you know, the jazz history and, and that culture. So yeah, it was good to be able to represent tap at a jazz festival and have to do more of that. Inspired by the New York Tap Festival and the LA Tap Festival, which is my favourite tap festival just for its feel and, uh, and spirit, um, I wanted to create um, the experience that I had in Australia, so we put together, with the help of Capizio, the Australian Tap Dance Festival, and that ran really well for the first time in 2012. We had an all-Australian faculty and participants from Australia, New Zealand and Singapore. We had a great week of five-day residencies, um, master classes, show at the end, as well as film night, um, jam night and educational videos and talks. We'll be doing this now f every year. Um, so 2030, we're going to bring out an international artist from America and build on that in the following years as well. I'm most of my entrepreneurs, people who are able to put things together, create things from ideas. In our industry, it's people who put on those big shows like Cirque du Soleil or the big tap productions, you know. That's something I want to do because those are iconic and they make you know, tap popular for that time. You know, if you could get another tap show going, create a lot of work for tap dancers, put it back in the public eye. Because people love tap, they just don't see it all the time. So it'd be good to, to be part of something and to be part of creating something.